Good morning, Pastor Connor here. It is 7.30 on October 21st. So glad to be with you today and to have you uh, join me for our continuing conversation about the Reformation. And again, I made reference yesterday to a couple different uh, resources. Uh, one, uh, LutheranReformation.org, well worth your time, and the book by Roland Bynton, Here I Stand. You can pick up a copy here at Zion uh, to borrow or just hop on Amazon or, or anywhere and pick up a copy online. I mean, make it your goal this winter to read about the Reformation because this is not only meaningful theologically because of its recentering us in the gospel of Jesus Christ, but just just reading the history is absolutely fascinating. I mean, the, the, there are some amazingly colorful characters. There are things that happen that you just, you would, you would struggle to believe weren't fiction, that somehow that, that Hollywood had, had scripted this, this whole uh, narrative because it's so many moving parts and so much drama involved. So it's really a fascinating piece of history. And obviously in the 15 minutes we have you know, today and tomorrow and Friday, we're not gonna get through all of this stuff. So I'm only gonna scratch the surface, but it's absolutely fascinating. And I encourage you, read Here I Stand by Roland Bynton. If you can't find a copy, tell me, but they're online, they're everywhere. And I know since they've been around for a lot of years, they're pretty cheap too. So pick up a copy and, and read that, and I think you'll be really uh, encouraged by it and informed by it. So yesterday, we, like I mentioned, started our conversation on the Reformation, and we introduced some of the main characters, right? We had Albert of Mainz, Pope Leo, Tetzel, Luther, and we introduced works of satisfaction or penance, the treasury of merits, purgatory, and indulgences. So if you missed yesterday, you might want to go back and check that out to get up to speed because those are really important concepts to understand. So we left off with Tetzel selling plenary full indulgences, essentially get out of purgatory free cards. And remember, some of the money is going to fund St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, and some of it's going to pay back the debt that Albert of Mainz took on to bribe Leo into getting his third bishopric. And remember, this is not only the position of bishop over a region, but it brings with it land and power and influence. So being a bishop wasn't just about ministering to souls. I don't mean to put that in a crass way, but for some of the bishops in this time, it was about land and power and influence. So I hate to put it that way, but that, that's the reality. And Luther saw it for what it was too. So Luther is a priest in this neighboring territory where Tetzel has been commissioned to sell these uh, indulgences. And people are buying up these indulgences like they're Black Friday deals, all right? And, and Luther is just beside himself. So he pins the 95 Theses, 95 points of discussion that he wants to debate with people. It's a conversation he wants to have with people. And we're going to get to these in just a minute. But Luther basically objected to the selling of indulgences basically for three main reasons. One, German money was being sucked into an Italian building, which most Germans would never see. So some of this was national in flavor, right? Germans were building a basilica for Italians. Luther, and I'm sure others, didn't think that was right. So number two, Leo had claimed that indulgences being sold in Albert's land forgave sins and released people from purgatory. And Luther disagreed. He said, look, indulgences, according to Roman Catholic theology, removed the temporal punishments for sin, but not sin itself. So Luther said this, papal indulgences do not remove guilt. The Pope can remove only those penalties which he himself has imposed on earth. So Luther was saying that the Pope was claiming more authority here with this plenary indulgence than he had the right to claim according to church law. So remember, 
when a person went to confession, the priest would absolve their sin and then prescribe works of penance or satisfaction to make up for their sins. And Luther was saying, look, you can only remove what you yourself have put on people. You can't remove people's sins with an indulgence. Even more, Luther didn't believe the Pope had any power over purgatory. See, at this point in his, his uh, life, he hasn't even started to question purgatory, which he will later because he'll realize it's not in Scripture. But Luther asked this, if the Pope does have the power to release anyone from purgatory, why in the name of love does he not abolish purgatory by letting everyone out? If for the sake of miserable money he released uncounted souls, why should he not for the sake of most holy love empty the place? Do you see what Luther is saying? He's saying, look, if the Pope can release people from purgatory for a price, then why won't he do it for free? That's a pretty good question, isn't it? Uh, you can imagine why they didn't sit, sit too well with Pope Leo. Now, the third reason that Luther objected is because he thought indulgences were actually harmful to their recipients because they gave people a false sense of security and diverted money that would have been given to people in need. So Luther asked, did Christ say, let him who has a cloak sell it and buy an indulgence? No. Luther is pointing out um, that extra money is to be used to help the poor, not to buy an indulgence. And then he said this, those persons are damned. Yeah, Luther, Luther knew how to use words. And, and if you know this era in history, they didn't hold back on their language. So there is some pretty intense language. I mean, if we had time, I'd pull out some of the other decrees and statements by the Roman Catholic Church and Luther and the Lutheran reformers. And uh, they might make you blush a little bit because they didn't play nice. They didn't do the nicey nice thing like we do today. But he said this, those persons are damned who think that letters of indulgence make them certain of salvation. He wasn't being mean. He's saying, you, you got your, your faith in the wrong thing. You're putting your faith in a piece of paper, right? And not in Jesus. And that was Luther's point. Paper won't save you. Jesus will. So all of this was greatly upsetting to Luther. So he penned 95 theses, 95 points for discussion on these indulgences. And he posted them on what was effectively the church bulletin board, which was the, the church door. And he did it on October 31st, 1517. And we'll have opportunity to talk about why he did it then and so forth, maybe another time. But he strategically chose this date because he knew, well, basically, a lot of people are going to be coming to church for the next day because it was All Saints Day. And we'll talk about All Saints Day next week. Anyway, so let me share a few of these theses to give you a flavor for them. Now, if you're really curious, you can always log online and Google 95 Theses and read them all. And that may be more than you bargain for because there's a lot to chew on. But here are just five of the theses. Number one, Luther wrote, When our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said, Repent, he willed the entire life of believers be one of repentance. So number two, this word cannot be understood as referring to the sacrament of penance, that is, confession and satisfaction, as administered by the clergy. Luther's point is, that's a separate thing. When Jesus talks about repentance, he's not talking about going to the priest, confessing your sins, and receiving works of penance. He said that, that's not what Jesus meant. The 21st Theses. Thus, those indulgence preachers are in error who say that a man is absolved from every penalty and saved by papal indulgences. Theses 27. They preach only human doctrines who say that as soon as the money clinks into the money chest, the soul flies out of purgatory. We talked about that yesterday, right? Tetzel's great closer. You know, every time a coin in the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. This is what he was preaching. This is what they were saying. You throw money in this treasure chest, you get your loved one out of purgatory. And Luther is saying, 
that's that's not scriptural. There's nothing in the Bible that talks about that at all. That is a pure human doctrine. Thesis 32. Those who believe that they can be certain of their salvation because they have indulgence letters will be eternally damned together with their teachers. Because think about this. What's the first commandment? No other gods, right? What's Luther saying? You are putting your faith of your eternal salvation in a piece of paper, which, by the way, isn't biblical, and the Pope has no authority to issue. You are totally missing Jesus. So Luther is very pointed on this, and he wants to have a conversation on it. And Luther, honestly, and maybe naively, he believed that if he alerted the church and the Pope to the abuses happening in the Pope's name, that the Pope would take quick action to stop it. Luther was wrong, because Leo's first response to these theses when they finally reached Rome was this. This is, this is what Leo says. I'm just basically summarizing. It's, this is Leo's response. He finally gets the theses, finally get there, right? They're not emailed. You can't text them. They have to you know, make their way from Germany to Rome. So it takes a while. But when they finally get there, Leo says this. Ah, the ramblings of a drunken German monk. He'll think differently when he sobers up. That was Leo's response. Luther's drunk. <laughs> so... But Luther wasn't drunk. He was soberly focused on the things, indulgences, that were obscuring Jesus. So Luther is called before official church representatives and official church councils, and the Pope finally issues an official proclamation giving Luther 60 days to recant or face excommunication. Luther did not recant, because Luther could not see how indulgences squared with scripture or even with church law. So Luther doesn't recant. Leo excommunicates him. Then to add insult to injury, the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, he declares Luther an outlaw, which basically gives anyone and everyone permission to kill Luther without any fear of legal reprisal. Yeah, I'm telling you, you can't make this stuff up. This is the stuff that happened. So Luther is an outcast, and he's an outlaw. Now, can you imagine being Luther? How does this feel? The church and state have spoken. You are an outcast. You are an outlaw. And people can kill you without penalty. Where do you turn? What do you do? Luther ran to scripture, and he dove in head first. And the result was the Reformation. And I'm really excited tomorrow to spend some time with you in scripture unpacking what Luther found. Really important stuff we're gonna talk about tomorrow. Okay, so we might call this little spat over the indulgences in the 95 Theses, the spark that ignited the Reformation. What Luther discovered in scripture though, which we'll talk about tomorrow, was the fuel that kept it burning. What was it? Well, it has to do with the righteousness of God. But we'll save that for tomorrow. Today, we want to give thanks again for the gospel of Jesus, even as we ask God to keep Jesus and his cross and empty tomb always before our eyes. All right, let's take a moment to pray. Lord of mercy, God of grace, we praise you for your goodness toward us in Jesus Christ. We praise you for his gospel by which we are saved. Hold always his cross and empty tomb before our eyes. Remind us always that Jesus has died for our sins and been raised for our life. We praise you for your servant Martin Luther, who, although a fallen sinner like us all, worked tirelessly, tirelessly to recenter your church in the pure, sweet, saving gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us always to be vigilant against those who would add to his gospel or detract from it so that we can continue to receive, confess, and celebrate the good news of his gospel until the day when he resurrects our bodies, renews the earth, and reigns among us into eternity. These things we pray in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks so much for being with me today. I'm really excited to be with you tomorrow to continue our conversation on the Reformation and to get into some of the meat of the, the theology and scripture that really fueled the Reformation and continues to fuel the church today. So have a fine day today. Be sure to share, and we'll be back tomorrow at 7.30.